Hey everyone, Alex here. Thanks so much for tuning in. In this video, I want to continue looking at the Pixhawk 4 S500 drone. Originally, when I made the build series for this drone, I only intend on making 5 videos. So looking at the actual assembly of the drone, and then manual and autonomous flight. However, throughout the entire series, I got a lot of really great comments, a lot of questions being asked, and a general interest for more videos. So in this video, I want to look at two flight modes, autonomous takeoff and autonomous landing. Now, to get started, you'll need your drone set up with all the steps outlined in part four of the series. In part five, autonomous mission planning, I also mentioned having one of these telemetry modules. This isn't required for autonomous takeoff and landing. It's nice to have to monitor it, but as long as you have manual flight, you're good to go. Also, you'll be needing your transmitter. Make sure that you have one of your switches enabled as outlined in part three of the series. This will allow us to toggle between autonomous takeoff, to actual manual flight, and then eventually autonomous landing. Once you have your drone and transmitter set up, go ahead and grab your USB cable, plug your Pixhawk 4 into your computer, and start up QGround Control. So once QGround Control is opened up and you're brought to the summary page, you'll see previous settings that are saved on the Pixhawk 4 flight controller. The first thing we want to do is go to the flight modes page. And here we can specify actually which flight modes we want to use and the corresponding switch on our transmitter. So on your transmitter, make sure that uh, you're in your S500 model. So here uh, you can see I've got my S500 model selected so that I'm using the correct switches. So I'll be using this SA switch here to toggle between my two flight modes. And as you can see, as the switch is on the top, I have this flight mode one takeoff highlighted. So before I begin flying, I'm first going to take off. And the next thing I want to do is now go to this altitude mode or some kind of manual flying. So to do that, I would take this switch, move it down to the middle, and that's going to trigger this flight mode four line, so altitude. Uh, the neat thing about altitude flight mode is that it helps to maintain specific height or altitude and also stabilizes the quadcopter so that it means love remains level. And now after flying, you want to land. I would do this by toggling the switch SA to the bottom. And as you can see here on the screen, this flight mode six is highlighted, which is the land flight mode. So make sure that you have a switch configured with these three flight modes um, and that it is also for the correct S500 model. So now to actually change the parameters, we have one of two ways. First, we can go to the safety page and look at return to launch settings and the land mode settings. So I covered this a little bit in part five, autonomous mission planning. So this is one way to set the parameters. However, I'm actually gonna do it through the parameters page because I feel like actually knowing the names of the parameters and the actual descriptions and the range of values is a little more important and gives you more insight into the actual settings and how they actually work. But you could do it one of two ways. It's Kind of a personal preference. So when we're doing autonomous takeoff, there are two parameters we need to consider. The first parameter for autonomous takeoff is this MIS takeoff altitude. And simply this is the altitude or the height that we want our quadcopter to go to. The default value is 2.5 meters and I'm simply just going to select 5 meters. The second parameter for autonomous takeoff is this MPC TKO speed. And this is the takeoff climb rate or how quickly we're going to take off. Default value is 1.5 meters per second, min and max are 1 and 5 meters per second. So I would just kind of stick with the default value, but one case where you may want to increase your climb rate is let's say that you're going to altitude of 30 or 40 meters. That's your takeoff altitude. Well, if you're doing this at 1 meter per second, it could take a while and kind of depending on your flight and what you're trying to achieve, you may want to go a little faster. So um, you can change that between one and five. I'm just gonna keep it at the default value for now. So for autonomous landing, there are also two parameters we need to consider. The first parameter is this MPC land speed. And this is the same idea as the MPC takeoff speed. And this is how quickly we are now going to descent. So one important thing to note is that the default value is 0.7 meters per second rather than one meter per second. So when you are descending, you typically want to go a little bit slower because the ground may be a little uneven and that co may cause some like instability as, um, as your skids are interacting with the ground. So it's good to go a little bit slower when you're descending. So I'm going to keep the default 
0.7 meters per second. Now the second parameter we need to consider is this calm disarm land. So with the Pixar 4, it's got a bunch of neat functionality. One of them is actually detecting if the quadcopter has landed. So it uses its internal sensors and all that to determine, are we on the ground? So one thing that this parameter is very important for is let's say we land and now we want to go mess with the propellers. But if the motors are still on, we may accidentally turn up the throttle and hurt ourselves because the quadcopter is still armed. So what this parameter does is automatically disarm the quadcopter after a specified number of seconds. So the default is two seconds, meaning once the Pixar 4 realizes um, or determines that the quadcopter is on the ground, it will wait two seconds, then disarm the quadcopter, meaning the motors won't spin up. However, you may have some reason to disable this or increase the time. So let's say you're flying, you want to touch down real quick, take back up, and then fly again. What you could do is either disable the parameter by specifying a minus one, or you could increase the value to let's say 20 seconds. But for my purposes, I'm just gonna be flying. When I touch the ground, I'm done. So I want to disarm after two seconds. Those are the four parameters required for autonomous takeoff and landing. Here's a quick clip to show you how I interacted with these flight modes using my switch while my quad is flying. That's how you perform autonomous takeoff and autonomous landing. However, there is one more fly mode I want to talk about, and this is a return mode. So what a return mode allows you to do is if you're flying around, you can trigger this mode and your quadcopter will automatically come back to where it took off and land that way. So instead of manually flying back, you can do this autonomously. So in order to trigger this fly mode, we have to go back to the flight modes page in Q Ground Control. And instead of having land select as our flight mode, we need to choose return. For the return mode, there are four parameters we need to consider. The first one is this RTL return altitude. And so when we trigger this flight mode, first we want the quadcopter to go to a specified altitude before it comes back. So the default value is 60 meters. Um, that's kind of high for my purpose, so I set it to 10 meters. The second parameter is this RTL descent altitude. So what this is, is the altitude at which we want the quadcopter to loiter at. So once we are above our takeoff position, the quadcopter is going to hover for a little bit at this height so that we can make sure that the ground's clear, for instance. So I'm going to have the quadcopter return at 10 meters, then I'm going to have it drop down and loiter at 5 meters. The third parameter is this RTL land delay. And this is essentially how long are we going to hover before we actually land. So typically I kind of set this to five seconds just so that um, I'm sure that nothing is in the way um, and that everyone kind of around me is prepared for it to come down. What you can do is specify a value of minus one, meaning that it's not going to hover and it's just going to land right away. So the fourth parameter is this RTL minimum distance. This parameter isn't as crucial as the other three, but it is still neat to know how it actually works and what it's used for. So basically what it's doing is it's checking your horizontal distance from your desired landing position, which for return mode is your takeoff position. So if you are further than, let's say, 10 meters from your um, takeoff or landing position, then you want to rise to your return altitude. So in my case, I specify 10 meters. However, if you are closer than this parameter value, then you're just going to stay at your current altitude there's no point in going up or going down to a different altitude if you're that close. So the default value is five meters. I'm not really going to worry about this parameter, so I'm just going to leave the default five meters. Uh, it may be useful for you if you have a specific flight condition or um, environment that you need to worry about, 
but for most use cases, you can just leave the default value for this one. One thing I do want to mention real quick is that when you actually enable the return flight mode, the quadcopter is going to fly in a straight line from its current position to the landing position. So right now with this very basic setup, there are no sensors or um, any background software running that is going to allow for obstacle avoidance. So it's super important that you're flying in a wide open field and there's nothing in the way of your quad, otherwise you're going to crash. So just make sure that you always have line of sight to your quad and you should be good to go. So after specifying four parameters, here's a quick clip on how I actually interacted with the quadcopter while flying and triggered the return mode. That wraps up autonomous takeoff and autonomous landing with the Pixar 4 flight controller. Even though these two flight modes are pretty simple, they're really cool to see them in action. If you have any questions about any of the parameters, make sure to drop those in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more videos about the Pixar 4 flight controller and drone FPV footage. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.